Bruca and Derek were the first things I saw when I regained consciousness. I looked around to see that we were in a dark, cavernous place, which I guessed was far underground. There was no light source anywhere. My eyes had adjusted just enough to see the dim outlines of their features as they slapped me awake with hard, beer-handed hits to the face. Where isn't important right now, snapped Bruca. It's who you're kneeling before. That's what you need to concern yourself with right now. Who you are meeting at this moment, this opportunity. It's not to be taken lightly. He'll change your life forever, just as he did ours. Then a set of eyes appeared blinking in the corner. They reflected light where there was none. Two eyes glared at me from the blackness and I could see a figure was getting to their feet. Hello, the deep rattling voice said. You're Xavier's apprentice. I've heard a lot about you. Who are you? I asked, more frightened than I had ever been in my life. Names are not important right now, said the Shadow Man. Choices are the important thing. Branches on a tree leading to an end. You have a choice ahead of you. A decision awaits you the same as a man walking down a road on a long journey and coming to a crossroads. There is a path which leads to the right and a path which leads to the left for both of you. The man sees the path leading to the left is unpaved, full of potholes, and winds through dark forests and treacherous mountain passes. Or the man sees that he can choose to go to the right. He finds that way is much more appealing to his eyes. There the road is paved and flat, leading straight towards the destination, which can be glimpsed in the distance. Many others walk along the road, and he sees it is lit with glow of warm sunlight. He's almost there if he only takes the path to the right. So which way do you go? If you were the traveler, how could you or anyone else justify your choice? To take the hard road. I stared at the reflections in his eyes. I tried to comprehend his logic. What are you trying to say to me? Just speak it plainly. I don't appreciate your metaphors. Are you trying to tell me that it would be easier to go along with you? That it would be better somehow to try and bring about oblivion? He shook his head and clicked his tongue. Look at the two paths. See the simpler one as the correct one. Use the right path as the true path. Sometimes, things are not as simple as they appear. Let us presume that you take the path which appears so simple, so perfect. Many have traveled it before you, and you find it takes you exactly to your destination as you predicted. But then you continue on. You walk further and you find that path is but a loop. A circle which takes you back yet again to the same choice over and over as if it is a test of unlimited attempts for us to pass. A test laid out for us by some greater force than us all. Someone who is very, very patient. The multiverse is coming to an end. I've seen it in the tree's glowing heart, where the beginning and the end are as one. I've seen things your master could only dream of, and I know that all of it comes to an end eventually. Just as it has before, it will come again. He will come again. We'll start over from scratch, begin again from the beginning. Make things better this time. For everyone. Not just for a few people, but for all. No more injustice. No more inequality. So your plan is just to blow it all up and start over? Is that why you're turning all these worlds into abysses? I challenged him. Scared as I was. He nodded. Exactly. See, I knew you would understand. It's for the greater good. And don't worry if you're here to see the end. 
you get to see the new beginning. I'll make sure of that. Because you'll be in charge. Oh, yes. He will see to that. Who else would he put in charge? Who else could do it to make everything fair? That will be the goal of the new multiverse. Peace and prosperity for everyone. No more suffering. Just out of curiosity, how would you make that happen? No suffering and only perfect peace for everyone? You you can't be everywhere at once. And even, even if you could, how would you stop everyone from making people around them suffer, from making them hurt? I mean, I mean, not that I'm condoning it, but what about free will? What if people make bad decisions? Someone suffers from it. Or loses their inner peace because of it. I couldn't help it. The questions were pouring out of me. I couldn't stop it. It was like a, f a floodgate of curiosity had opened up in my mind at the mention of such things as he was planning. No more suffering, he repeated. Peace and prosperity for everyone. You'll see. You will love it just like the rest of them. He will make sure that you love it. Because I won't have a choice in the matter, right? But you do. You do have a choice right now. Decide. I stuttered and I tried to think of a way to stall, but, but, but it was impossible. They all glared at me in the darkness and they, they waited for me to say that I would join them. I was terrified, but I... I, I couldn't do it. I just, I couldn't. No, I, I, I won't join you. I, I refuse to believe that this is better. Darkness, the abyss? This is death. I, I want to fight for life, for freedom. Find another Patsy. I wasn't sure where I heard that last line, but it seemed to fit in that moment. The dark eyes around the room glared at me and squinted in disbelief. So be it. He will die with the rest of the non-believers, the dark shadow man said. And then he pushed me, behind me without me realizing it, a portal had opened in the ground. I dropped backwards into it, and then I was falling down, down, down for a long, long time. And when I opened my eyes, I was in a grassy field, and I thought maybe just... Maybe I was home, but it wouldn't be that easy. So I stood up and I looked around to see that it was early evening in this place, and the sun going down orange on the horizon it certainly, it certainly wasn't Earth, though. All around me were perfectly round craters that pockmarked the grassy meadow all around me. The cold wind was blowing in from the direction of some mountains in the distance, and I noticed a small village at the base of the mountains, smoke rising up from the chimneys there. The idyllic-looking village appeared to be one of a medieval age, I thought to myself. Walking carefully towards it through the grass, if there was any hope for contacting Xavier, finding a new home, maybe the village would have the answers. Mostly, though, I just didn't want to be alone in this strange world when the sun went down. I hoped I could make it to that place before nightfall. As I walked through the grassy field, I saw more of the craters were opening up by the minute. The ground was crumbling all around me. I suddenly noticed with growing apprehension the entire field was unstable. I hurried along even faster, picking up my pace as I ran to try desperately to find my way through the pockmarked field full of craters. A few times I had to stop on a dime to avoid running straight into one since the waist-high grass obstructed the view. Just as I was nearing what looked to be the edge of the strange, crumbling field, I felt the ground give way beneath my feet, and I leapt into the air, reaching for the solid ground on the other side of the chasm which had just formed where I had been standing. Barely, I managed to grab onto the tall grass on the other side of the pit, my legs dangling over the hole in the earth that had just opened up. Below was nothing but blackness. I noticed when I made the mistake of looking. The grass was being pulled from its roots. I saw with horror as I kicked my legs and tried with all of my effort to climb up to the solid ground, but it was no good. The grass pulled free from the dirt, and I went backwards into the blackness, screaming as I fell, and then something grabbed me. Someone, someone grabbed my hand and pulled me up, panting. Lying face down, I looked up to see who had rescued me. It was a girl about my age who 
now looked out of breath and exhausted from the effort of saving me. She had, she had black hair and was dressed in black, simple clothing. Thank you, I managed to say. You, you saved my life. I did, she said back. Now you owe me yours. Come, let's go back to the village. I'll introduce you to my family. You can see your new home. Behind the glass. Whatever behind the glass meant, I wasn't liking the sound of it. Uh, th thanks? I really appreciate you saved me and all, but I need to get home. Back to my family. I mean, you, you understand that, right? Her eyes darkened and she stood up to her feet, looking down at me. I noticed she was holding something in her hand that looked like a dog collar. Talva respectus, she said, and the collar suddenly flew from her hand and snapped around my neck, fastening itself tightly there. It felt like a necktie, which had been tightened too much. There, she said, nodding to herself. Come with me. You understand that, right? Hey there, kids, it's me. Mr. Goofy Pasta, I want to tell you thank you so much for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to today's episode of the podcast on the podcast. For those of you guys who like listening to me here, maybe you like listening to me do behind the scenes shit uh, stuff. You can always do that at twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. I Twitch stream sometimes. And when I Twitch stream, it's usually either playing very random video games or doing work like you're currently hearing me do right now. I always love seeing you guys. I always love hearing from you guys. So if you wanted to pop in and listen to me work or pop in and backseat game, then hey, you're always welcome to do so. I always appreciate a follow there. And of course, like always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. You guys, as always, are the main MVPs of this story of every night's story, and you guys help me keep the lights on here. So without further ado, I want to give a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tanya Oren, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, That One Guy, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Murky Moo, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Caddo Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Chaos Art, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Zachary Grafius, Gorang Tramagasy, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Guy Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Croconut 509, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Trickin, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zicardi, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so very, very much. Thank all of you who are in the description down below, and honestly, thank all of you that can give anything, even when it comes down to just $1. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Sweet dreams. <laughs>